In the world of quantum physics, there is a classic problem that was asserted by Niels Bohr in 1920, and that is that if you want to observe the nature of a particular quantum particle, the moment you shine light upon it, the moment you act upon it or measure it in any way, you determine a new state for that particle. And so there is no pure, pristine way to analyze, to make a measurement over a particle, because the very act of observation alters its state. This was illustrated in a famous thought experiment by Erwin Schrodinger about 20 years after Bohr's principle emerged, where he talked about a cat, a cat that is sealed in a box with some radioactive material. In about an hour's time, the radioactive material may or may not decay. If it decays, it will cause a hammer to be triggered and will break a flask containing some poison, thereby killing the cat. The problem is that after the hour, it's a doubt. You don't know whether or not the cat is still alive. Whether the radioactive material was triggered, thereby killing the cat, is an uncertainty. And so when you open the box, you find out, you discover whether that cat is alive or dead. But in the world of quantum physics, that cat is both alive and dead until you open the box. You see, this is the old adage, curiosity killed the cat, is the act of opening up the box, the act of observation, which determines its very fate. This is not just a problem in the world of physics, but also in the world of spirituality, in the world of halacha as well. You see, when the Miraglim went off to the land of Israel, Moshe chose the best of the best. He chose the chieftains, the heads of the tribes, the people who would be least likely to fail in a mission. So the question that all the Mepharshim struggle with is what went wrong? How is it possible that they fell prey to their desires and emerged with a negative report about the land of Israel? Only two of them, Yoshua and Kalev, came back with a positive thing to say about the land. Everybody else came back with bleakness and negativity. So what happened? The Me'ashiloach, the Ishpitzer, writes that why is it that the Miraglim came back with a negative report? The answer, he says, is that they saw an Eretz Ocheles Es Yoshvea. They saw in their hearts and their minds a land which consumes its inhabitants, and because that's what they observed, that's the reality that unfolded. It is the act of observation of the land that caused the negative fate to befall the Jewish people. Curiosity killed the cat and curiosity destroyed the land of Israel. Why is it that a future of bloodshed, of pain, of destruction, of harbon, of suicide bombs, of missiles flying overhead into Sterot and Ashkelon, why is it that that became the reality? Because that's what the Miraglim feared and that's what they observed. And this is true on a halachic level as well. There is a principle called Yehush Balam that an owner who owns a possession but loses that possession is desperately looking for it and doesn't give up hope. That possession still belongs to the original owner. But the moment the owner gives up searching for it, the moment he stops looking for that object and feels that he'll never recover it again, the object stops belonging to the original owner. It is his perception of reality which shapes the reality. And I would submit that this is the greatest problem that we have to work on in our generation. With all the opportunities to comment, to observe, to analyze, to assess that exist in our hands, whether it's blog posts, whether it's op-ed articles, whether it's comments, tweets, Facebook posts, we all have opinions. And every time we issue an opinion, every time we make an observation, every time we look at the world with the eyes of Miraglim, we create a new reality. We take a perfectly fine institution and we shape a bleak, negative picture in the eyes of our friends and our community. We take a person who otherwise was an upstanding member of society, and by maligning them, by creating a negative picture, we change the kind of person that he or she really is. The negativity of the Miraglim is not just about Moshe's particular mission that he sent them to, land, to, to assess the land of Israel, but it is every time 
we look with eyes of observers, the eyes of Miraglan, we have the ability to create a beautiful world. God forbid the opposite.